Hi there. How are you today? Welcome back to another episode of the RKMCS Criminology Lecture Series. My name is Professor Open Minded, and I am your lecturer for today. Our topic is all about green criminology, a new branch of criminology that deals with the study of harms and crimes against the environment, including the study of environmental laws and policies, corporate crimes against the environment, and environmental justice. As a backgrounder, the first work on green criminology was published in 1990 by Lynch, Long, Strateski, and Barrett, under the University of California Press. The publication covered generally about crime, justice and the environment. A follow-up work on that topic was presented by Frank and Lynch in 1992 with their publication on corporate crime and corporate violence. In 1998 with the publication of a special issue on green criminology by Piers Barron and Nigel South, interest in green criminology began to spread more widely. In broader terms, green criminology has only been more widely recognized just a few years ago. Thus, green criminology is a relatively recent area of specialization within criminology. In his book, Fundamentals of Criminology, 5th edition, Professor Ramo Manwung, a Filipino criminologist, defined green criminology as the analysis of crimes involving a variety of environmental concerns with a link to criminal activities. He viewed it as the application of criminological principles to understand environmental issues. This is one of the few published books in the Philippines that mention green criminology as subfield in the broad course of criminology. The core idea behind green criminology is that human harm the environment, by which green criminologists mean the whole ecosystem or the living planet Earth, components of the ecosystem such as air, land, water, forests, and species that inhabit ecosystems in serious ways. Some of those harms are defined as crimes, and are widely known as green crimes. These are class of crimes that criminologists ordinarily fail to examine. Thus, the works on green criminology studies are not written by criminologists but mostly ecologists, environmentalists, biologists and other social scientists. Now, what specific environmental issues green criminologists study? These are particularly related to the classification of green crimes as brown crimes, green crimes, and the blue crimes. In the Philippines for instance, green crimes are those related to violations of the Revised Forestry Code in the Chainsaw Act, Wildlife Conservation Act, the National Integrated Protected Areas System Act, the Philippine Mining Act of 1995 and the People's Small Scale Mining Act. Brown crimes are those related to violations against the Toxic Substances and Hazardous and Nuclear Wastes Control Act, Philippine Clean Air Act, Philippine Clean Water Act, and the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2000. In the case of blue crimes, these are violations of the Philippine Fisheries Code, the Laguna Lake Development Authority Act, jurisprudence related to water and maritime related crimes such as those enforced by the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, Philippine Coast Guard, and the Philippine National Police Maritime Group. Another specific issue green criminologists study is about environmental justice. What is the concept of environmental justice? By definition, environmental justice is the fair treatment and meaningful involvement of all people regardless of race, color, national origin, or income, with respect to the development, implementation, and enforcement of environmental laws, regulations, and policies. In this context, this goal will be achieved when everyone enjoys the same degree of protection from environmental and health hazards, and equal access to the decision-making process to have a healthy environment in which to live, learn, and work. Green criminologists study about violations of the basic rights in relation to the environment. These include the issues on sovereignty over natural resources and the obligation not to cause harm, the principle of prevention, the precautionary principle, sustainable development, intergenerational equity and rights-based approach to environmental justice. That ends my short presentation about green criminology. See you again next time. Thank you. I hope that I have enlightened you about this new field of study and wish you're interested to partake in achieving the goal of environmental justice. Kindly share this video and join or subscribe to this channel. You may also be a member to our site www.criminologysolutions.com.